I'm doing this show for an, almost an hour and a half ready. We haven't even acknowledged that it is Halloween. Our lovely staff did a great job here of decorating. Olivia How long and I think a couple other people. Show? An hour and a half? It's, I mean, <laughs> I don't know when the show started for you. For me, it started about 50 minutes ago. <laughs> but maybe for you, you were out here doing a show by yourself. Coach I did, Mangini, uh, good to see you. really shoddy math there. <laughs> That was, uh, anyway, Halloween. Yeah, yeah. So this that's week. Going I want to have been to the show. Yep. I'm going to work out at 2 a.m. <laughs> okay? Yeah, I did. All right, I'll cut her some slack. <laughs> My apologies. <laughs> fading, fading. <laughs> Two hours to go, right? Two hours? Mm -hmm. Coach, let's talk about the Kansas City Chiefs. Ooh, they improved. Faithful, full day's work, Jenna. <laughs> they improved uh, to 7-1, and one, beating the Broncos 30-23. to 23. Denver hung around in this one, but... Mahomes is just too good, surprisingly better than Case Keenum. Mahomes threw for 303 yards, four touchdowns. He's got now 26 touchdowns in eight games this year. He'll probably start again next week. Here he is after the game. For me, it's all about just getting the ball out of my hand. I mean, that's the biggest thing for me is as long as I'm getting the ball out of my hand, there's a good chance that good things are happening. And so I just try to, the line's protecting really, really well. And so I'm just getting it out of my hands and getting it to the playmakers and they're uh, scoring touchdowns. All right, Coach, great game. Great game from the whole team. What impressed you the most about this now 7-1 and one Chiefs team? You must have been so excited. No, I mean... <laughs> Every time we come and talk about Kansas City, you're so excited. Uh, what, what I did like about this game is, is there was an element of adversity, and that's what I've, I've been looking for. Or that's what I always look for with these young quarterbacks is how, do they, how are they going to deal with things when things don't go exactly according to plan? And then they didn't do very well on third down. They, they mm -hmm. struggled there. Uh, it, it was a situation where Denver was in the mix much longer than I think even Kansas City expected, and he was able to to be resilient throughout that. And, and that, to me, is as important or probably more important than his ability to, to, to shine and excel when everything is going right. I thought he made a great point about getting the ball out and getting into the hands of playmakers. A lot of that is is what happens. He hits a five-yard slant that ends up going, you know, 40, 50 yards. He's got... Yes. Travis Kelsey, he's got he's got a lot of things that that other guys may not have. But but my biggest takeaway that was in the face of adversity, he was able to continue to excel the way that that, that he has been. Yeah, it's great to see him spread the ball around. Like you don't know who to take away. Um, Tyreek Hill is emerging. Man is one of the most lethal threats. And I like his intermediate game. That's where I see his game growing. As far as a receiver, a threat, getting it in short, getting it, um, getting the ball quick. And you know that he, gets, he has uh, amazing quickness. But as a route runner, I've seen him improve. And Patty Mahomes' ability to be on target, that's the way you see that improvement. Sammy Watkins, man, if he's going to have a 100-yard game or if he's going to have a big game, man, how are you going to be able to stop them? So for me, seeing other players play a major role, I don't like the fact that they didn't have 20 rush attempts. Now, I do understand you're going to win some games, but... If they're going to be consistent, they have to be able to rush the ball, but Sammy Watkins being able to emerge. So you can't take away Kelsey, can't take away Hunt, can't take away Hill. Like, you can't take away all these guys. So seeing them win in different form and fashion, I think that helps me out knowing that they have the ability to be able to do it. Well, they can spread the ball around to anybody they want, right? Like, that is, that is the benefit that Pat Mahomes has that I almost over any quarterback in the league as far as, okay, so they've, they've had seven games this year that that they've won. There's been a game that Travis Kelsey was their best offensive player, aside from the quarterback, a game where it's been Kareem Hunt, a couple games where it's been Tyree Kill. Yesterday was Sammy Watkins. Like, when you are game planning for the Chiefs, there's not one guy that you say, if we take him away, it cripples what they are able to do. Sammy Watkins was the guy, their big free agent acquisition who was yet to have one of those games where he was, mm -hmm. the, you know, he would have gotten the game ball from the coach, so to speak. And that was yesterday. They, they fell, down, fell down 7 nothing to Denver. And then over the next 30 minutes of football, they blitzed them 30 to seven. Like, and they won the, the they won the game in those 30 minutes, from midway through the first to midway through the third. Like that's how they did it. And it, and from there, they kind of let the foot off the gas a bit. Denver ended up covering first time all year. The Chiefs didn't cover the Vegas spread. Like, but that I don't know how you game plan for the Chiefs offense. I know how you game plan for the Chiefs defense. Run it right at them. They have a horrible rush defense, allowing five and a half yards per attempt. That's how you game plan for the offense. It's, oh, just, just keep them off the, field. off the field. But, he, but when, when you look at this, see, if you're going to take away Kelsey and you're going to take away Hill, which is the starting point, the quarterback, especially a young quarterback, needs to have the maturity 
to be able to go to a Sammy Watkins, and not every guy mm -hmm. can do that. When you've got stars right. on the team, there's a tendency to want to push the ball to the stars no matter yeah. what, and oftentimes those stars are chirping in the huddle if they haven't gotten whatever they, they feel they need to get each game. So I, I like that fact. He threw the pick, what was it, late in the third quarter, mm -hmm. early in the fourth quarter, and we kill Kansas City's defense pretty consistently, but they did a good job, I thought. They, they turned the ball over then twice late mm -hmm. in the game. Th this game was, was closer than I imagine Kansas City expected, and, and I thought that Mahomes, with very little running game, was struggling on third down, showed some character in the in the victory. And I know you don't want to put Mahomes anywhere other than where he is right now, and I understand that philosophy. But right where he is right now through eight weeks is the NFL MVP. Would you agree with that? Through eight weeks? If, Tell, I, I hate doing the through eight weeks, through three weeks, through four weeks. Let's see where he is at the end of the season. Every single week we come in here and somebody's stock is up, somebody's stock is down. What, what was good about this past yeah. week is he fought through adversity, didn't have a very good running game. He made, some, he made a mistake late in the game that they were able to recover from. You know, there's a lot of positives in, in that. Yeah, there's a lot of positives, but at the midway point, someone's going to be playing well. We do it 2014, 15, 16, 17. So it's either going to be him, Patrick Mahomes, or you're looking at Todd Gurley. They're undefeated. He's the best player on that team. So him and Patty Mahomes have been the most impressive at the halfway point in the season. Patty Mahomes, man, what he's doing from a touchdown interception and being able to distribute the ball to what I think the most dangerous offensive weapons in the NFL, that's been, I would think, right now that would probably tip me over Gurley as the MVP. During our first Super Bowl season in New England, we were five and five, and Bill showed a horse race, and he stopped it midway through, and he said, "Who's ahead?" And you know, like six guys raised their hand, horse number, whatever. And he's like, "It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. All that matters is where they are at the end." And it's the same thing with any, you know, any evaluation of like course, that. Of course, but uh, unlike uh, the NFL season, unlike a horse race, there's like home field to be gained. There's a buy to be gained, and being this far ahead at the midway point does help you achieve those ultimate goals at the end, even though the Chiefs have lost a ton of home playoff games with home field. Yeah, and I could see why Coach would be saying that, especially in a race as far as the horses don't have names. But lo and behold, one of those horses might be Secretariat, and that might be Patty Mahomes. That's one thing the coach didn't say. So, yes, we're jockeying for a position, but potentially this kid right here could be a special. Like, we don't have names on him yet, but if there was a special horse running, like, if Coach would have told him that, I think more guys would would have picked him just like Patty Mahomes been anointed by Nick Wright. The, the team, the, the Chiefs played yesterday, the Denver Broncos, the, Pat Mahomes now played three times in his career because he played the one game he played last year was against the Broncos. In his third game against them, a team that had played well against him in Denver the first time, he had four touchdowns, one pick, a 125 rating. Through eight games of the season, he has 26 touchdowns. The only guys to ever do that or have more than that are Peyton Manning than to, or, and Tom Brady. They both won MVP when they did that. That's what Pat Mahomes is on track to do this season. Belichick's horse racing story? My concern was that only five guys raised their hand. It seems like it would be really obvious. <laughs> Gotta take a break. Coming up, the Packers recover from their crushing loss this Sunday. That's next on First Things First. I was Jeez. waiting.